So there are a number of different ways by which mobile malware can get onto a system, and, and the most popular mechanism overall would involve uh, basically creating malware or really creating an application that looks enticing to download. And, and there are really several ways in which this can be done. Uh, the most popular method is something that's known as uh, repackaging. So repackaging. And basically, the idea behind repackaging is that what a malware author will do is it will take a legitimate application, let's say something that's available on one of the app stores, they'll download the application, and then they'll basically disassemble it so they can see the, the existing and constituent components that go into that application. Uh, they'll then take the disassembled version and they'll insert some malicious code. Let's say they'll put some malicious code right here into the, the, into the disassembled version. And then they'll basically reassemble the application and then resubmit it back to the store or to the, uh, uh, to the place where the applications can be downloaded. Okay, now this is basically, you can think of this new version that's been kind of disassembled modified and reassembled. It's kind of like a rogue or modified version of the application. So it's, it's, it's now overall malicious, but because it looks so much like the original application, <clears throat> and there's a good chance that these stores will still accept it without realizing something is awry. Now to make things more complex and maybe to confound attempts to uh, identify that the thing is malware, what they'll often use is when they, when they do insert, let's say, malicious code, uh, they'll use legitimate sounding class names like, you know, com dot legit dot uh, sounding name. So they'll pick a nice legitimate sounding name. Uh, and obviously it will be something different than whatever in here, but something that just sounds benign overall. And they'll use these kinds of names in their code so that it's hard to tell the code does something bad. And that's just one aspect of what these guys will do to, to maintain their stealthiness. Uh, another technique that malware authors employ to maintain stealthiness is it'll actually amend the underlying code so that instead of it doing something malicious outright, it'll pull in an updated application that contains the real malicious code. So you can imagine that uh, what they'll do is they'll, they'll have a server somewhere that contains a full-fledged malicious application. Okay, and then instead of having really bad code written inside of the original application, really they'll, they'll just modify the code here to basically pull in this update and then uh, the update itself will be malicious. And the idea there is that uh, the update code itself, the code that pulls in the update itself will probably look innocuous and otherwise benign. So it might be allowed entree into the application store, uh, but what it actually downloads is malicious and, and that, not, that might not be visible. If you're just looking at the original application, you may not see anything in malicious, but when it actually executes in a real environment, it'll pull something in that is actually malicious. Uh, and so one example of a piece of malware that exhibited this type of behavior of this kind of full-fledged update was something called uh, Droid Kung Fu. Droid Kung Fu, okay? And it basically pulled in um, a, a malicious update. In fact, this particular application was on both the official as well as third-party uh, Android market, so it actually did get some traction. Now, that's, that's one way that stealth can be maintained. Another technique that uh, mobile malware authors can use is that instead of actually updating the full application, what they can do is update maybe a component. So maybe they'll pick, let's say, this one component right here, and they'll have it. They'll have an update for just the one component, uh, and that obviously it's nicer because the, the one component might be smaller. But the the other real reason for for doing this type of approach is that when you only update a single component, uh, you may be able to circumvent the need for any type of user approval of the update. So when you are trying to update a full application. There's a chance, and in fact, most likely, the user is going to have to agree to that update, and they may choose not to, to update at that time. When you're only trying to update a single component, there's a better chance that you can do it in a way that does not require any type of user intervention. And without any type of user intervention in place, there's a better chance the malware will actually get onto the system. Uh, and in fact, there was one case, it was a, a piece of malware called uh, AntServerBot. AntServerBot. And AntServerBot basically uh, pulled in a update via a publicly available blog entry. So there was a blog somewhere, a publicly available blog entry that itself contained an encrypted payload for updating one of its components. And so that was, um, you know, in many ways, a very stealthy approach to being able to, to mount an update without anybody catching on to what you were actually doing. Okay? So repackaging is one major technique. Another technique that uh, malware authors can use in the mobile space is kind of wholesale masquerading. So mask. Rating. 
Okay, the idea behind masquerading is that they would basically masquerade as a legitimate application. And here, the difference between repackaging and masquerading is that in masquerading, the entire application is written essentially from scratch. Uh, in repackaging, you're basically taking an existing application and modifying it. In masquerading, you're doing it full-fledged from a clean slate. And at the same time, though, the malware authors will try to strive for the same look and feel as a legitimate application. So uh, maybe by example, one of the one classic example of masquerading was a piece of malware called uh, fake Netflix, fake Netflix, which had the same look and feel as the regular Netflix application. And the fake Netflix application was designed to basically steal the user's Netflix credentials. Okay. A third technique, and I think this is the last one I'll probably have a chance to cover in this video that malware authors use is basically to create enticing applications. So creating enticing applications, things that people want to download, uh, even though they're not trying to masquerade as anything else. So for example, um, th these applications may, may even offer useful functionality and, and um, it, they could include things like games. Uh, so maybe somebody will offer a really nice game and when you download the game, you might actually get the game, but it may have some additional malicious functionality that comes with it that goes beyond the uh, the original stated premises of the game. Uh, and in fact, in this last category, uh, you might also see malware authors using things like um, in-app advertisements to advertise these uh, uh, very nice, useful applications that are in fact malware. And one example of this was an application called uh, GG Tracker. So GG Tracker. And GG Tracker basically uh, was an application that leveraged an advertisement for battery usage analysis to trick victims. And then the victims were then pointed to uh, a piece of software that claimed to offer or to provide the user with more efficient usage of their battery, but in fact it turned out to be malware. But, but of course, you know, at, at the same time, when you, when you see an application that claims to improve your battery life, and battery life is something that people always generally want to improve, it's a very enticing offer and you're going to want to download it. Okay. Now, I, I do want to close by saying that propagation itself is kind of just one dimension along which you can categorize threats. If you look at how I've done other threat taxonomies, the other key dimensions that you want to consider are what malicious actions that threat takes and how that threat actually tries to evade detection or really stay resilient on the system, what types of characteristics does it have. And I'll talk about those topics in other videos.